Greetings, salutations, respect, and love. I am Scott, and you, my dear little chicken head, you've wandered onto the Prog Corner, the number one Prog Rock channel on all of YouTube, according to me. And today, yeah, I love American music. I'm going to be honest, I'm proud to be an American. Absolutely, I wear my ugly American card on my sleeve. Absolutely, I do. No shame in my game. So whenever I get a chance to talk about a great American band, I'm going to jump on it, man. And today we're talking about talking heads. Are they prog? And does it matter? Well, you know, if you're talking about a band who's associated with people like, I don't know, Robert Fripp, Adrian Ballou, uh, Brian Eno, prog rockers are probably going to take notice. And I... Uh, yeah, I, I've got a long history with Talking Heads. I've always loved them. I think every one of their albums is great. They've got eight albums. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about this band. They were formed in 1973 uh, in Rhode Island School of Design where David Byrne and Chris Franz started a band called The uh, Artistics. And uh, Chris's girlfriend at the time was Tina Weymouth, and she, I guess, was like driving him around to gigs. Eventually, uh, uh, David Byrne uh, invited her to be the bass player, uh, Many, many times, finally she acquiesced and joined the band, so they were a three-piece. They put out their debut single, Love, uh, Building on Fire, and uh, they were still trying to get signed, and they were, you know, getting a lot of important people looking at them, like, I don't know, John Cale and uh, Lou Reed and uh, uh, Seymour Stein from Sire Records was an early uh, person who was interested in the band, wanted to sign them, but he wanted them to... Uh, hire a keyboard player and a guitar player. Uh, didn't think they could quite cut it as a three-piece. So what do they do? They find the old Jonathan Richmond and the Modern Lovers uh, keyboard player, Jerry Harrison, who also plays guitar. So instead of having to hire two people, they just put Jerry in the band and they were a four-piece for their first album. And the rest, as they say in history, the band's uh, first album came out in 1977. Uh, and 25 years later, which is the minimum to be considered for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yeah, sure enough, in 02, they were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, where they absolutely deserve to be. I am not going to be ranking a 1982's. The name of this band is Talking Heads. It's a live album, so why would I? And a couple years later, they put out something called Stop Making Sense, which was the uh, Jonathan Demme uh, movie that they put out as a, a concert film. It features the great Alex Weir on guitar. Uh, worth watching that movie just to see him play. He's fantastic. Would have been better with Adrian Ballou, but hey, whatever. Uh, and we're not going to be talking about 1996's uh, No Talking Just Head by the Heads. Uh, I guess they were touring as the Shrunken Heads because they were one member short, as you know, David Byrne. Uh, had a big falling out with the rest of the band. So they put that album out, and uh, it should have been great, man. Instead of having David Byrne on lead vocals, they had like a whole bunch of different lead vocalists, including Gordon Gano from uh, Violent Femmes, Richard Hell, Andy Partridge from XTC, Debbie Harry, Ed from Live, what's his last name, Kowalczyk, uh, Michael Hutchins from NXS and Johnette Napolitano from Concrete Blonde. Man, I love Concrete Blonde. I need to see if any of their records are available on vinyl because I had them all on CD. Love that band, but that album just wasn't any good. So we're going to be talking about the eight proper studio albums from Talking Heads. And it's pretty obvious what's at number eight. It's the only album that doesn't really cut the mustard. The only album that's a little soft and it's True Stories. Uh, this was uh, like part of uh, a film that David Byrne was doing. Uh, I guess later on he did release some of the incidental music, some of the, you know, non-songs that were on here. Uh, it's If this were any other band, this would be a great album. Love for Sale is fantastic. Uh, People Like Us is a good, good song. Uh, Radiohead, yeah, Radiohead took their name from the song Radiohead off this album, but obviously the best song on here is Wild Wild Life, as good as anything they ever did. It's a little bit of a disappointment, but, uh, you know, everybody's got to have a worst album. At number seven, yeah, this one kind of hurts, man, because all the rest of these albums are fantastic. At number seven, I'm going with 77, their debut album. Uh, they were still kind of trying to figure things out here. They hadn't quite gotten that uh, Talking Heads sound down yet. Um, so they were experimenting with a lot of different timbres and textures, but it's still pretty raw. Uh, 
A lot of great songs on here. Of course, uh, uh Oh, Love Comes to Town opens it up. Uh, don't Worry About the Government's on here. But yeah, the best song on here by far is their most popular song. It's Psycho Killer. It only hit number 92 as a single in the U.S., uh, but TikTok has made Psycho Killer like a, a huge, huge hit. Millions and millions of views on YouTube. This album hit number 97 in the U.S., and it's dynamite. I worked with a guy. Uh, my first job at uh, in retail was at a chain called Record Bar, uh, Edison Mall in Fort Myers, and my boss was a guy named Bruce Levy. He claimed this was the best album of all time, so he would be really pissed off at me right now. Bruce Levy, you are an awesome dude. I love you. Okay, at number six, uh, I really like this album. I think this is like their most underrated album by far. Yeah, I love this thing. It's Nude from 1988, their final album. And this is where they decided they'd, uh, you know, do some weird stuff, man. This is like the first album in a while where they were experimenting. Uh, this is a prog album with world beat uh, inflections throughout. I love the monkey on the cover. That chimp is cool. This album was produced by none other than Steve Lillywhite after a couple of self-produced albums. I guess they figured they wanted to go and explore some new directions. Fantastic record. Nothing but flowers. Love it. Blind. Mr. Jones. Probably my favorite song on here is Cool Water, but I love this album. I think it's dynamite. It's completely different than anything else they ever did. You know, you think about Paul Simon and Peter Gabriel experimenting with, you know, world stuff and African beats. Hey, the Talking Heads might have done it even better than any of them. I think it's amazing. At number five, another one I consider to be completely underrated. I love this album. It's Little Creatures, man. It's their sixth album. Uh, from 1985. This hit number 20 in the U.S. Uh, so it was a fairly decent record for them, but coming on the heels of Speaking in Tongues, I think this album underperformed a little bit for them, but look at that album cover, man. I love this thing. And there's that image. Yeah, I'm using that in my thumbnail, obviously. I think this is a dynamite record. It's got some uh, Americana thrown in there. You know, you get some washboards and some accordions and some fiddles and some, you know, steel guitar and stuff. But don't be fooled. It's still the Talking Heads, man. And she was. Oh, man, I love that song. Television, man, so good. Uh, give me back my name, Perfect World. But obviously the, uh, the absolute stone cold masterpiece track on here is uh, Road to Nowhere. I love this album. I think it's fantastic. It's hard to believe there's four albums from Talking Heads I like more, but there are, oddly enough. So let's look at number four from 1983. It's Speaking in Tongues. I used to have the uh, Robert Rauschenberg uh, cover. I wish I still had that because uh, I met Robert Rauschenberg a couple times, the artist, uh, and uh, yeah, he did an alternate version of the album cover. I need to see how much that's going for, see if I can pick one up. But this is the one. Uh, this was their highest charting album. It hit number 15 in the U.S. Um, the song Burning Down the House was their only top 10 hit. It hit number nine. Uh, and this was their first self-produced album after three in a row with Brian Eno. They decided that to try their hand. And, you know, the slinky rhythms and the danceable beats are all there. But it's just wrapped in a little bit more of a, a calmer, more gentle, almost an ambient dance feel all the way through. It's a cool record. Uh, it's one of those records that uh, just kind of floats and hovers above the surface, doesn't really go anywhere. But, uh, you know, this must be the place. Fantastic. Swamp, great song. Slippery People, Girlfriend is Better. Uh, well, yeah, just every song on here is really, really good. But not as good as my top three. And at number three, oh yeah, from 1978, I'm going with their second album. Yeah, this one's called More Songs About Buildings and Food. Uh, apparently, Andy Partridge uh, of XTC recommended that song title. And I remember back in the day, one of the things that got me interested in Talking Heads was people were comparing them to XTC all the time. Oh, yeah, you know, the Talking Heads are like uh, American XTC. So that got my interest. And this is the album that uh, I first heard from them. Uh, I heard Brian Eno was producing it, so I had to check it out. And man, oh, man. Uh, I was not disappointed. This is where that classic talking head sound first originates. Uh, it was recorded, oddly enough, in uh, Compass Point, 
uh, Studios in Nassau uh, in 1978. So I'm wondering if they bumped into Emerson, Lake, and Palmer as they were uh, uh, recording Love Beach there that same year. I don't know. But uh, they uh, performed Take Me to the River uh, on American Bandstand after this album came out. The Al Green cover, fantastic version. But there's some, man, there's some good songs on here, man. Thank you for sending me an angel warning sign. Oh, man. With your love. Uh, but probably my favorite track on here is The Big Country. And uh, you could tell something was stirring, man. Something was happening. Uh, the marriage between Talking Heads and Brian Eno. Marriage made in heaven. But the top two. These two albums are unimpeachable, man. These top two are so great. Almost interchangeable. Um, I love them both. Almost equally. But, you know, one's got to be in first place and one's got to be in second place. And I'm going with Remain in Light in second place from 1980. The band's fourth album. This sucker hit number 19 in the U.S. And it's got the uh, the world famous track, uh, you know, once in a lifetime. Same as it ever was. But there's more to it than that, man. You got Adrian Ballou on this album. He plays on four tracks. He plays on Cross-Eyed and Painless, uh, The Great Curve, Listening Wind and The Overload. But uh, the best tracks on here for me are Born Under Punches and uh, Once in a Lifetime. But every track on here is so good. It's uh, just taking all these bizarre polyrhythms and world type of beat that you've never heard in pop music before. This is just so mind-bending. Uh, and I guess the whole Eno, uh, Burn, My Life in the Bush of Ghosts. Kind of like a complimentary album to this, but uh, yeah. Uh, any other band, this would be their masterpiece. This would be their best album. But Talking Heads aren't any other band, man. And at number one, oh yeah, at number one, it's their third album. I love this thing so much. Fear of Music, let me take the sleeve off. Maybe you can see the textured. It's like a manhole cover kind of thing going on here. Just an amazing, amazing album. The second album produced by Brian Eno for the band. And this is where... They really, really figured it out. Yeah, you've got guest appearance from uh, Robert Fripp on this album. Uh, Robert Christigau said this was gritty uh, weirdness. Two-word description for this album. Gritty weirdness. And I think that's pretty accurate. Uh, very stark album cover. Uh, but a lot of these tracks have like single word titles and it totally works for me, man. You've got mind, you've got paper, you've got cities, you've got heaven, you've got drugs, you've got animals. But, uh, you know, the songs with more than one word are good too. I Zimba changed everything, man. I Zimba was just like one of those songs like what am I even listening to here? You knew that something new and special and exciting was happening. Uh, Life During War Times, probably uh, the biggest known, you know, best known song off this album. But this is my favorite Talking Heads album. Uh, it's the one I fell in love with. And uh, that's the reason why I still listen to them this day. So are they prog? You know, I really don't know. I'm going to put a progometer score on there right now to let you know how I feel about the progginess of uh, talking Heads. There it is. The Andy Edwards Progometer. Anyway, guys, this Sunday, oh, man, oh, man, I'm excited. We got Kimmo Porsty. We got Marco Greco. Hopefully, we'll have Marco Bernard on, too. The guys from Samurai of Prague, they got a brand new album dropping. It's called The Time Machine. These guys are on a tear. Just amazing. Uh, incredible new album featuring Royna Stalt from The Flower Kings, Christina Booth from Magenta, uh, Clive Nolan, right, <laughs> from Arena. Uh, just a, an action-packed, a star-studded album, and I think you guys are really going to like it, so we're going to talk to the boys in the band, listen to a couple songs. Anyway, peace in the Middle East, man. Free Tibet, free the Ukraine, and God save King Charles III. Chucky e. needs your saving. Oh, yeah, he does. Absolutely. That boy, you know what? I heard that boy's not doing so well. Maybe he's in remission. Maybe he's not. Let's not take any chances. Bring him to America. Bring him right now where we got all them good pastors going on. Oh, we're going to take care of that boy. Yes, indeed. Oh, yeah. We're going to do spells. We're going to do incantations. Oh, thoughts and prayers for the king, but none of that's going to work. So we got to bust out the snakes. Oh, no. The snakes are going to, oh, they're trying to bite me, but they're not going to get me because I got the armor of God on me. And I hope you put it on this morning too. I love you guys. I'll see you Sunday. Yeah. Peace.